What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian? It's not like this was news to us, Brian. The only surprising thing about this was that it came much sooner than we anticipated. We are referring to the Marvel delays. The Secret Wars, Fantastic Four. Brian, you said it. <clears throat> there was no way they were going to keep these date, dates. And we suspected that this would probably happen sometime um, in terms of announcements, perhaps sometime next year. And we got it, what? Two months after? What? <laughs> yeah, we didn't make it far. <laughs> <laughs> um. Brian, what do you attribute this to? Do you believe is what you suspected at first that this was just a probably too much, or, or b uh, they don't have anything really set in stone, stone to sort of move forward with some of these projects? What What are your thoughts on the, on the Marvel delays? Yeah, I think if you go back to our Comic Con show where they released five and six, Phase Five and, and Phase Six. That was my first reaction was just how compressed the timeline was for the number of television and movie projects they were trying to get done. And I kind of, I kind of went back and just double checked and I was just like, okay, so phase one, two, and three took, you know, basically 12, 12 years, you know, so when you factor in the initial production date of Iron Man to the release of, of Endgame and, and far from home. And the, the Comic-Con schedule basically was attempting to do <clears throat> almost like two to three times as many projects in only three years. And you just kind of scratch your head and you're like, there's just no way that this was going to happen. Um, so I, I immediately said, I was like, we're going to see delays. Yeah. And to your point, I'm a little surprised we didn't even make it into 2023 before we saw the delays. But the writing was on the wall because some of the, the, the notable projects themselves ran into different kinds of issues. So we saw like Fantastic Four, who knows exactly what their timeline was, but once they lost John Watts, that already set them back. And Quite a bit. Maybe, you know, and it, it probably it probably took them a little longer than they expected. Who knows? I mean, Matt Shackman gets the job. We don't know who they talked to along the way. We don't know how the negotiations went it does have the feel of it's late. Like by the time they signed him and they just started with a writer and they don't have any casting and you're looking at the calendar and you're like, this is a tent pole. They have to get this right. And you're like, this is no way they're making the 2024, you know, deadline. So they're like, all right, so that's a project that you knew had to go backwards. Then, you know, we'll talk about some blade updates, but I mean, that's, that's a key project that's been percolating for years now that basically blew up on the eve of shooting. I mean, they got to the doorstep of kicking off yeah. and the whole thing just melts down. So there's two individual projects that had to go backwards. And now you don't know exactly what the interconnectedness is, but you know, there is interconnectedness. So any one of these projects really falling behind then naturally leads to one or more of the Avengers projects has to back up as well. And then we get Secret Wars right now, but it wouldn't even surprise me if Ken Dynasty <clears throat> ultimately moved off of that May 2025. I, you know, it wouldn't surprise, you know, Secret Wars right now is a 2026 event. It wouldn't surprise me if it was a 2027 event. Like, it's just, yeah. they're not going to rush those in the end. Yeah. And we as an audience don't need them to rush. We'll be there. If it's good, we'll be there. Yeah, the worst yeah, thing exactly. they can do is rush and then exactly. deliver a bad Avengers movie. Exactly. And you cannot, Avengers have been hitting the bill since its inception. You cannot go backwards. Nine figures isn't enough. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, the blade problems, Brian. Yeah, let's go there. Again, this all began with that phone call. Yo, Kevin, I want to do Blade. 
Kevin's like, yeah, let's do it. That's it. Because that's all they had. I don't know what's been the delay because that was quite some time ago, Brian. If this was... Brian, if I'm Kevin Feige and I get that phone call and I make this happen and we announce it, I'm working on it already. I don't understand where the delay was. This goes back to the question. Is Kevin Feige spread too thin? Yeah, and I think we know the answer is yes. Yeah. I think we know the answer is yes. I mean, and again, it goes to the, this was another project where it, the rumor or the reports, and these seem like more than rumor, they had a lot of people come through the studio with an idea. Like this was not like, to your point, like they had a star, they didn't have an anchor writer or director. So they heard pitches. They heard lots of pitches. They finally settled on the Sam Tariq's rumored period piece, 1920s. So it just strikes me that they clearly, and who knows? I mean, I assume when they first heard it, they responded to it enough to say like, this is where they want to go. But, you know, scale of one to 10, I mean, who knows? Like maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't blow them away. Maybe it was the best yeah. of what they had and they right. thought they could work with it. But now this thing has been, you know, this thing's gone to scrap. I mean, basically all they have, they brought in Bowdoin Mayo to rewrite. They fired the writer. I was wondering if they were <clears> going <throat> to keep the existing writer. They're not. So all of the ideas from, uh, the, the, the former writer who worked on Watchmen did some really acclaimed stuff. Gone. So they got a new writer who's worked with them before. Um, Ali. Mayo's. What's that? Ali is working on it as well. well. So w let's get to that. Okay. <clears throat> One wonders. Marisha Ali is certainly pretty accomplished, even even within the ranks of the MCU. Not a lot of not a lot of MCUers walking around with two Oscars. Got a couple with nominations Brie Larson's got an Oscar but not a lot walking around with two let alone two in the last five years sounds like the one of the fallouts of this is he now has a lot of control how do you feel about that I look at it two ways Brian one way is that he feels a confident about taking on this role he's passionate about it i mean he called kevin feige and said you all want to do this you got two oscars ain't no you you getting phone calls you're not calling nobody so he did that i'm pretty sure he's gonna do his research i'm pretty sure he knows what's at stake with him taking on this role and did that in that it can't be something, even though is inevitable, something that they compare to Wesley Snipes. But if they do, this got to be better. Or we're gonna look at the other way, the Rock Syndrome. I don't think it's that. I think is the latter, or the former, the former. So the, re the report is he now, he effectively has script control, which is he can kind of demand rewrites as we go forward on the new work that's being done. My first question is, do you think this stays a period piece now? Was that his idea or was that Tariq's idea? And with us going back to square one, what are the odds that this now is a modern day story? I think one of the things that had me excited about this, Brian, is that they were going there. This was going to be, a, I would say, an accurate telling of Blade's origin from the comics. So I was, I was expecting this, you know, I was hoping to see that. I think it, it is quite interesting, and I think it would be a good decision to keep it in and if they don't they make it up the the, the, comp the comparison will get even stronger than brian from what's the snipes version so yeah i, I say keep that. it i agree with that i think 
The other thing as part of the period piece is it felt like this was going to be a, like a more true origin story. The, you know, like what Wesley Snipes never, they don't refer to him as Eric Brooks. He's already the day walker when you meet him in a very cool way in the nightclub. You get a little bit of backstory from the Chris Christopherson, from Whistler, the Chris Christopherson character, but you never really even flash back. You don't really ever see how he starts yeah. as the daywalk. So there was ground there to explore, and it sounded like that's something they would want to do. I think they'll keep that aspect of it. Whether they stay period or not, we'll see. But I think they will go to the beginning, and he will have a name and an alter ego. It won't just be the daywalker. So, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty interested in that. Um, it'd be interesting to see, I know you have not, you have not had a chance to see Werewolf by Night. I have. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, won't, I won't spoil it for you, but I will say the idea of Blade and Monsters, right? Blade and Monsters cohabiting. I think you'll feel better about it after Werewolf by Night, just conceptually. Okay. I think there's some good things in that they did in that that made me feel like, because there were rumors that Blade was gonna cameo in this. And I was like, yeah, I buy it. Like I, I could see why that was a debate. That could he have a seat at the table in this story, even if it was only for one, one or two scenes. So <clears throat> I'm kind of with you. I'm kind of with you. I don't think they should shy away from period. I don't think they should shy away from origin. Uh, I do think if one of the other rumors is true, what they should definitely beef up is action. Blade's got to be an action star. This can't be long, drawn-out builds to one or two set pieces. He's got to be in the fight. He's got to be like Neo was to the Matrix. Like Bruce Lee was to in his films. He has to be that dude that you're like, wow. Like in Grease 2, who's that guy? gotta be like that yeah and he and he's got to do and the thing i mean relative to some of the other heroes we have on the board right now you know he has to do it with weapons right this isn't just a martial artist right I mean, we're used to seeing lasers guns like we're supposed to, you know can't like we're used to seeing kind of technology and then now more recently we're a little bit used to seeing like superpowers and magic and things like that but this is you know a ninja effectively who's who's kind of part who has kind of part vampire so it's sort of like I, that that needs to be top shelf so i'll be yeah, I, yeah i'm i will be watching i'm sure we'll get a when we get confirmation who the fight choreographer is for this movie we might have some clues i'm, I'm definitely watching that yeah it, it, if you if you find out let me know because then i will want to know what this guy's done and look and take a look at how what it would probably look like you know what i'm saying yeah very interesting, very interesting. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Marvel delays. Um, some are saying that the delays was, uh, <clears throat> were, uh, uh, I guess, um, how would I say, a result of what's happening with Blade. Um, and if you've seen World War by Night, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of that and do you agree with Ryan in his comments regarding this show? Yeah, my only other comment on Werewolf by Night is I do think Marvel, we talked about this, not the, we talked about how the trailers look. I do think Marvel stumbled into another avenue of introducing something, which is this idea of the special. This is a 52 minute program. It's not a series. I think it was a win from a format perspective. Like I, I really do. Like I, I kind of looked at it after I got out of it and I was like, I immediately in my mind was like, all right, what else in the catalog would make sense as like, let's just give you an appetizer. Like we don't need six episodes. You know, we don't need nine episodes. We don't need two hours on a big screen. We just need 45 minutes to test drive the car and see if you like it. The idea is fantastic. I think it works. Like I, that, from that standpoint, I think this worked. So you are hearing rumors about the possible Nova uh, special. 
That right? would work. That would work. We've already told you the idea and what I've been waiting to see. <laughs> that day on Xandar when Thanos came through and destroyed, you could do one joint on that, that special, on that. So when he shows up in other cosmic places, everybody's excited because they saw that. I think that's a win. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys think of that idea. Um, that's our show. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.